Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and I'm going to show you the secret to uh, getting your clouds and VDBs to actually look like clouds and VDBs. Um, if you want to know the secret to it, I'll just say it right up front. The, we're going to go ahead and we're going to change some settings inside of the material. And But the main thing that's going to make the big difference is you're going to want to go into your render settings. You're going to want to go to combine depth, twirl that down, and add at least 12 into the volume trace depth here so you know base default is at one it goes all the way up to 31 i found that 12 is really good it's just for real quick before we get into the tour you can see at one this is what your cloud probably looks like when it comes in and then you set it to 12 it actually brings in and actually works properly now if you want to give a like for giving away the secret right at the beginning of the video please i appreciate that if you guys want more quick boom 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 straight to the point tutorials let me know uh, now, if you'd like to just continue watching to see the whole process of bringing in the VDB and setting up the materials and stuff for it, and then getting this to look how we want it. So that's basically it, though. If you like that, uh, leave a like and enjoy the rest of the video. You can see here we actually have our, these are our VDBs, and they match the clouds of the sky map. Like, they actually look good, and it's all that's in there is this one dome light set to one. There's nothing special going on. We've just set our VDB up properly with the material and also the render settings, which is the key. So let's go ahead and just talk about doing that. This is gonna be super quick. Type in sky in our asset browser and pull that in. And we'll use that as the VD, as the HDRI. And then what we're gonna do is gonna to go to Redshift Objects, Redshift Volume. Then you just select your VDB file. Uh, I'm gonna use a file from Motion Lab. We're gonna use um, the Pixel Lab and Motion Lab are the same thing. Motion Lab's like their better version of it in my opinion, but we'll have a full review on that coming soon. And we're gonna use it in a, uh, really rad render project which by the way if you don't know what that is check that out there's a link below it's your chance to be creative and have some fun and enter to win really cool 3d prizes okay but no cost to you and it's not a contest it's a sweepstakes so anybody can win right so it's not like you know if you're it's very beginner friendly okay okay besides that we've also got everything uh, my store is on sale 50 percent off use code really rad or render including all of my training Okay, so we've got a VDB. Let's go ahead and open up our VDB. Uh, we've got a cloud pack from Envergen we could use, uh, but we're going to use one from uh, Pixel Lab. So both Pixel Lab and Envergen have some free things as well, but we're going to go ahead and grab the Storm Cloud High Res, open that up, builds it. Okay, and then we're going to go to Preview, go to Points, and I like to put this around 200. Anything higher, it starts, it's fine. It's just a, it's like this weird laggy bit where it changes the points. It just helps you see where your clouds are, but I don't understand why it's so laggy when you're setting it up, um, but it is. So we're going to stop uh, doing that. There we go. So now we can actually see our cloud is down here. We kind of see the shape of it. We can raise it up, whatever, and we'll take a look at our sky map, and we want it to, you know, we want to see how it looks kind of from the side here. Okay, but we kind of have the general idea of what our cloud looks like now. And so all we have to do now is we can come in here and go to material, and two things we can do. We can use the pyro volume, or the redshift volume. Now the difference is the pyro volume is gonna come in and kind of be linked up already with the right channels. The volume one, you select it on your own. But the main difference, if you didn't know it, is you can actually displace the cloud volumes themselves with redshift now since the 3.6. And basically you can um, you know, add turbulence into it with um, a node. Now it's not an easy, simple setup. I'll have a tutorial on that. If you guys want to know, we're just going to talk about how to actually set up the render settings really quickly for this. So let's go ahead and just grab the pyro volume. The way we're going to change it and the adjustments we're going to make, exactly the same. There's not really any difference at all between these two. I'm not sure why they both exist, but they do. Okay, so we'll grab the pyro volume, put it on there. We'll hit render. And this is probably what all of your VDBs look like. When you bring them in, you think they're going to be these nice puffy white clouds and you come in here and you enable them. So we bring them in and you can see they're pretty dark and uh, they're right now, I don't know why, but my redshift is struggling. It's I've done something, I've screwed something up. I need to like reinstall the driver or something, um, but it's struggling with clouds for some reason. Normally it does them pretty well, but you can see it's just kind of dark. Now it looks really, really cool and really good, which is nice. Um, it looks beautiful, but we need it to be lighter. So how do we make it lighter? Well, there's a bunch of settings in here we could mess with, but we're only going to do two, sorry, three things inside of the actual material that's a good go-to for clouds, okay? We're going to take the scatter ramp. We're going to slide it up just a tiny bit. 
we're going to take the absorption ramp, slide it up just a tiny bit, and we're going to go to the anisotropy. So there's three things we're going to change within the pyro volume or the redshift volume standard volume material. And that is we're going to grab the scatter remap ramp and pull it down a little, which is just going to make our light scatter a little bit more through our cloud. Then we're going to go to the anisotropy. And when you're dealing with clouds, you want to go closer to one, but don't go past like 0.7 or else it starts getting kind of weird looking. So we're going to go with 0.65. And then for our absorption, we're going to grab this dot here and we're going to slide it up. And that's just going to allow it to not be so harsh inside of our cloud a little bit. And that alone is going to make it look a little better, but not a ton better. It's still going to look kind of dark. The secret sauce to this is inside the render settings. And inside of here, we're going to go to Redshift. Then we're going to go to the Basic tab and then underneath the Combined Depth, twirl that down. And here we have the volume combined depth. So this is going to be the trace depth, basically, of the volumes. Now, we need to set this up to at least like 12. It goes up to 31, but just cranking it up to 12, it is going to increase render times, but it's going to make it work like you want it to work. Uh, if it doesn't go up higher, you know, play around with the values, but basically the higher the depth, the more kind of accurate and light it's going to let shine through our clouds. I found that 12 is a really good baseline for... Um, getting the results you want without it being like too heavy and taking too long. So I found that 12 is really good. And you can see already just how different that looks and how already like that just looks right. And so the anisotropy and stuff that we did is what's going to let those little hard edges of our clouds kind of be that really see through light and the absorption is what lets us um, that light kind of be darker in these thicker parts of the cloud. Okay. And then the scatter is just how much that goes through. Now, the one thing you're going to notice is that more it renders, the brighter and brighter it's going to get. So this starts off looking kind of too dark, but then it gets brighter and brighter as it fills in. Uh, and that's just kind of the way it works. Now, if you wanted to, you could maybe lower that or bring that scatter back up a bit so it's not quite as much. And if you really wanted to, you could grab the um, absorption color and add just the ever ever such a smidge of orange to it. I'm talking like 1%. We'll do like 1.5% saturation. And it's going to really just help blend in that evening a light a little bit. Just so it should match a little bit more and it gets more of that nice cloud color. And there you go. That's really it. So in short. So in this. Okay. Yeah. That's really it. In short, if you like that, these quick little tutorials and problem solving things, let me know uh, and leave a like. I'll do more uh, for sure if it gets enough likes. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.